Hey, Max Katz with Apri.io, and this is another lesson in our online training course. And in this session, we're going to cover uh, the cloud database. And to find the cloud database is very simple. Um, it's right next to apps, the tab. And um, if you are new to Apri.io, you will probably not have any databases here. I already do. Um, but you should have a, a tutorial link here. Um, if you don't have any databases. But to create a new database, um, all you need to do is to click Create New Database and give it a name. Um, and the new database is created and you're instantly um, taken to the database page. Um, now, every database you create has a number of default uh, or predefined collections uh, you get with every database. And they're listed right here, users, files, and devices. So users is for user management. So if you would like to add uh, a registration, uh, login type of uh, capability to your app, so the users collection is built in where you can create users uh, and registry users and so on. Uh, and we'll cover this um, in a later session in more detail. Um, files is for uh, uploading files. You can upload images or, or PDF files, for example. Now, devices, this works together with push. So when you enable a push, um, every time an app uh, installed on a device, uh, the app will register in this, in this collection. Um, and what this allows you to do is that if you want to send a push message, but only to specific users, for example, only to users who are on the East Coast um, in the United States, then you can filter, you can run searches based um, on information in this collection and then send push messages only to those people. So that's for that's what the devices uh, collection is for. So there are three predefined collections and then you can create as many custom collections. Uh, and that's done by clicking create new collection. And for example, we can give it a name of products. and a new collection created. And of course you can create another collection as uh, quickly. Now, um, so this is the collection name and then these are some actions that you can uh, do in this collection. So of course you can rename, you can delete the collection. Um, now security is that you can, you can make the collection to be read only or, uh, or write only. In other words, when you do a request, you can only read data or maybe you can only write data. Now, a secure collection, this means that um, a user uh, has to be logged in. And again, this works together with the user's collection is that um, when this is checked, you need to have a notion of a user uh, who is logged in into your app. And again, we'll cover this um, uh, in more detail. Now, if this is checked and the user is not lo logged in, uh, that user will not be able to get access to the collection. So this is an extra security uh, security feature. Um, manage indexes, you can create, um, I need to create at least one column. So let's do that. Uh, let's see how we create columns. Um, so to create a column is also very simple, just plus column and give this a name. As for types, there are different types you can select. There is number, boolean, date, array, pointer, which points to another object object, um, basically a column will contain an object which has properties and a geopoint, that's for geolocation. And maybe we can create one more, this will be price, and this could be a number, All right? And so on, so you can of course create more columns. Uh, you can also enter some sample data by clicking plus row, and for example, uh, this will be uh, we'll call this uh, phone and the price and we can do one more and this will be right and so on. So now once you have a column uh, and this is again how you can enter sample data which is really nice uh, and then the ID created at and updated these are automatically created um, fields and of course inputs. Uh, now as for manage index, now we can do that. So index, um, 
if you're doing a query on a specific column, so you can actually define an index and it will greatly increase the performance if you run the same query uh, all the time. So that's what the index is for. Uh, change default ACL. Um, now, the ACL is right here and it stands for access control list. And basically this again works together when you have users is that um, you most likely when you have a notion of a user in your app, there are some objects that belong only to a particular user. And so to do that, we're going to set an ACL. We're going to say that this object belongs to this user. Now, when that user signs in into the app, he or she will only see, uh, again, their objects and not someone else's. So that's what the ACL uh, is, is for. All right. If you need more real estate to work uh, when you're entering sample data, you can always go into a full screen mode. Now right here, so this is a cloud database. So the, this database is running uh, in the cloud. Right? It's not the database on your device. Again, it's in the cloud. And how do you access this database is via REST APIs. And you can actually uh, show the various curl commands. Uh, that are available. And this is just to help you understand how the service uh, works. Uh, and also, it could help you create the service in the app builder. Uh, but we will cover this um, in a later session. Um, you can actually automatically generate services. You don't need to set up the service by hand manually. Uh, now the query is, you can run um, simple queries um, and uh, on this uh, data and just to test uh, and see uh, how this works. Um, so just a really quick uh, example. So we can say name and we can say phone and click run query. And you can see that I'm saying show me all the items uh, where there is a phone, name equals to phone. And if we enter one more row, maybe another phone, and then again, if we run query, now we of course get uh, both. Uh, if we clear, again, we get, right? So um, that's for, um, for query. Let's quickly move to settings, right? So right here, this is where you can rename the actual database. This is where you can delete the database. Uh, when you click delete, uh, it's going to ask you to confirm just to be sure because this cannot be undone. You can also duplicate a database. So one uh, uh, option is if you have a production database versus development. And finally, um, you can export the data to either JSON or CSV uh, formats. Um, right here, this is your API key. So when you make a call to a, a database from the app, this key is used. You can also create additional keys. And maybe if you want to share the key with someone else, so for example, uh, test key. So you can share this key with someone else, and then once they're done testing, you can delete this key. And of course, they will lose access to the, to the app. Uh, the master key is basically like root access. So you can do anything with the database. So you should keep it um, secure and probably not share it with everyone. And again, once you have the master key, if you make a request with the master key, uh, that user will have root access to the database. You can also create different versions, right? So this is um, version one of the database. And then you can also restore. So you can have different versions of the data that you have in the database. Right here, um, again, if this database is used for push notifications and Right now it's not, um, but you would see uh, that it's linked uh, to an app that, that has push enabled. And lastly, share with support. This isn't available on all the other resources. If you need any help and we need access to your database to see what's happening, you can always share this with support, right? Permissions, this is where you can add um, uh, people who are on your team, you can give them access to this database so they can work with you on your app and again, have access to this database. Right. And um, the last thing to, um, to cover is that 
um, you can also import a collection. So um, you can, um, if you have data, uh, if you put it in the right format, uh, you can actually import a collection by uploading the file. And a quick and easy way to see what the right format is, is to just create a very simple um, database or a collection and then export it to either JSON and CSV. In this way, you can see what is the right, uh, what is the right format. All right. So this was an introduction to the database, and in the next uh, sessions we will uh, show you how to use the database, how to display data, uh, create data in a database from the app.